Wow, what a weekend. So, Saturday morning, I'm running around, doing errands, minding my own business, when who do I come upon? A baby micro squirrel in the middle of the sidewalk. It was just standing there chirping and squeaking and obviously lost. It was clear that he had been blown out of his nest the day before during the high winds. His mummy wasn't anywhere in sight. There weren't even any trees around, so it seemed like he probably traveled a little bit of ways from his home tree. And he was chasing people, and people were like, what the hell's that? Because nobody's used to seeing a baby squirrel because they're not supposed to be out. And he was running up to people like, help me, help me, or like, where's my mummy, where's my mummy? And like, these people were running away from him screaming like these two women were like ah, ah. I'm like, okay, that's a little dramatic. One squirrel one time had the bubonic plague and now all these other guys can't catch a break. You know what they always say, don't judge a squirrel by that one bubonic plague squirrel. So anyway, this little baby was running around, chirping, chasing people, tugging on people's pants, running out into the street, cars were stopping. He was putting himself in danger. So I scooted him into my tote bag and I took him home until I could come up with a plan. So I finally got him home and I researched what a baby squirrel needs. I made him a hut out of a Amazon, or um, a small locally owned, small independently run business box, and some of Nutland's hamster chips, and a hot water bottle wrapped in a tea towel. And it's funny because this tea towel, it has cats on it in a VW bus, I used to have two the exact same, but the other one I also gave to a different squirrel in distress. Although that tea towel ended up being a shroud, sadly. So his hut was all set up and first things first, he needs a name, Poppy Seed. And so Poppy Seed's in there snuggling up and cuddling with the hot water bottle. Little baby squirrels that young can't regulate their own body heat, so they rely on their mummy and all their brothers and sisters in the nest for heat. And so I was reading some more and I learned that mummy squirrels will always try to find their babies when their babies are lost, but they'll only look for them during the day. You should always try and reunite them before you do anything else because that's the best chance a squirrel has is with his mummy. So following the advice I read, I brought him back down in his hut to the place where I found him. There's no trees around. There's a busy parking lot. It was steps above busy Bloor Street and traffic and chaos and fruit and flower stores and like deliveries and just not great. So me and Poppy Seeds sat together in this grassy median by the parking lot. I can't leave him here. There's no tree here. Mummy's never gonna come here to look for him. It's not the nicest spot in the world, you know? There's broken glass and cigarette butts and cap gun rounds and other typical parking lot detritus. And we're kind of sat there looking at each other like, what the hell do we do, you know? And the only tree I could spot was across the street, a really big tree, but it didn't have a nest in it and it was like right beside the sidewalk but you know what it was the only tree it was the only tree so I put him in his hut under the tree with a note on it that explained what was going on because I didn't want someone to come along and think it was like garbage or something so I placed him there and I went back across the street to stake it out because I wanted to make sure he was okay and I wanted to see if any mummy came and got him and wanted to make sure nobody was messing with his hut and I watched the box for a while and then what do I see Poppy Seed, don't. He was popping his head out of the box. I'm thinking to myself, don't you do that. Stay with your bottle. And then he comes running across the friggin' street, up to his old tricks, running around in the street, out the street. And I'm there being like, Poppy Seed, bad boy or girl. You get back in your hut, Poppy Seed. Don't be bad squirrel and bad boy or girl squirrel. And people are looking at me and I'm like, who the hell are these two freaks? And he's climbing up my pants and he's climbing all over me because he's trying to get warm. So I said, you know what? Enough is enough, we're going back home, plan B. So I've got him back at home, I refreshed his hot water bottle for more warmth. Every chance he gets is like crawling up me and like getting in my hair and like cuddling up in my hair and on the back of my sweatshirt and he's like on my arm like this, like trying to like get food or something or like be mummy milking mummy or something. He didn't even have tea. But I didn't want to feed him anything in case that was bad, right? So I let him lick a peanut shell and he was just like, on a peanut shell, so I thought that will give him some salt or something to keep him going. Then I started making some calls. So I finally got a hold of Toronto Wildlife Service and they did a little screening over the phone and determined that yes, Poppy Seed definitely is way too young to survive on his own. He needs like expert medical rehab and all that, but 
No vacancy for squirrels down at the Toronto Wildlife Service. They were full of squirrels. Couldn't take one single more squirrel. So they gave me a number of somewhere that might have room, which is called Shades of Hope, and it's a wildlife rescue way the hell up near Lake Simcoe. So I get them on the phone and they said, yes, we have room bring them on up here, but I'm like an hour and a half away and they are really only intaking until like 6.30 p.m. and it was almost five. And so I said, okay, if I leave Toronto right now with him, I'll be there at about 6.30, will you wait? They said, yes, no problem. Like angels from heaven. So we packed Poppy Seed up in the car and hit the road, way up to Georgina, Pfefferlaw, up near the lake, gateway to cottage country. And he was good in the car and he seemed to love Q107. So we finally arrive at Shades of Hope. It's gorgeous. It's a beautiful property in Pfeffer Law. The rain had just started to fall. It was misty and gorgeous. And there's a beautiful deer grazing in the pasture and his roommate, a smelly donkey. And as of that date, Shades of Hope had 257 squirrels at their facility already. Poppy Seed was the 258th squirrel that they were caring for. And these squirrels, these baby squirrels, have to be bottle fed every four hours. So it's a lot of manpower, a lot of work. And they actually spilled some tea about the Toronto Wildlife Service. They said, oh yeah, they've got double the space, double the staff, and yet they're full at 35 baby squirrels. Interesting. But Poppy Seed will be very happy there. Once he's rehabilitated and strong enough to be on his own, he will be set free in beautiful Pfefferla, close to Lake Simcoe, a squirrel's dream, really. And I can email Shades of Hope with his case number to find out how he's doing, so I plan on doing that later this week. I just am so grateful that he can have a new chosen family up in cottage country. And um, I'm so grateful to the people at Shades of Hope for running this amazing facility and giving all these animals a second chance and being stewards of our mother nature and mother nature of earth. And I know that forevermore, I will always look back on and cherish the memories I made that day with Poppy Seed.